Welcome to the Three Martini Lunch. Grab a stool next to Greg Corumbus of Radio America and Jim Garrity of National Review. Three Martinis coming up. Really glad you're with us for the Thursday edition of the Three Martini Lunch. We have champagne toast slash bitter chaser for our first martini. Very, very bad for our second and crazy for our third. And Jim, our lead martini today is the passing of former National Security Advisor and Secretary of State Henry Kissinger at the age of 100. He turned 100 back in May. As far as I know, he was still very active in writing and consulting until very, very recently. And so it seems like he was still uh, very with it and, and his opinion in, in high regard by a number of people. Uh, his passing is not without controversy, of course, and you knew this was coming. I mean, every year on his birthday, you would have people being upset that he was still alive. Uh, they consider him a, a war criminal for the expansion of the Vietnam War into Cambodia and so forth, and issues with Pakistan and, and Bangladesh. Some didn't like that he was part of the U.S. helping Augusta Pinochet throw out the communists in Chile in 1973, but the capitalistic uh, tendencies of Pinochet over the next uh, couple of decades, uh, others would argue, vindicated that decision. The guy was an ardent anti-communist, which we always appreciate. Uh, he preferred detente, uh, and as I know you'll talk about, uh, uh, a better way uh, came a little bit later. Uh, his approach was to manage the Cold War. It wasn't great necessarily when Gerald Ford left office and Henry Kissinger went with him. It got worse under Jimmy Carter, for sure, when you think about the expansion into Central America and the Soviets into Afghanistan. Uh, and then, of course, Reagan had a different way. Um, so some people see him as this uh, wise sage who realizes there are no easy decisions and when it comes to foreign policy, and uh, it's uh, basically a, a smattering of terrible decisions you have to choose from. And other people obviously see him as the worst person alive, as uh, evidenced by Rolling Stone, for example, whose headline was Henry Kissinger, war criminal, beloved by America's ruling class, finally dies. And if that wasn't uh, strident enough, the subhead was the infamy of Nixon's foreign policy architect sits eternally Beside that of history's worst mass murderers, a deep shame attaches to the country that celebrates him. So, Jim, slightly more nuanced take from the editors of National Review today and your morning jolt. So, uh, I mean, you could dissect the legacy of Henry Kissinger for hours, but what are your what are your biggest takeaways? Well, first of all, Greg, is Jan Wenner, the founder of Rolling Stone, one of part of America's ruling class? <laughs> you could argue that probably. I mean, you know. Owned, founded Rolling Stone, owns Men's Journal, probably, you know, multimillionaire. Got into a recent trouble for some comments about uh, that. I just kind of like, you know, ah, you know, the ruling class, you know, it's kind of you know, like, well, isn't, wait, aren't, aren't the people running your magazine part of the ruling class? No? Okay, just checking. Um, Henry Kissinger's legacy is a circumstance where it is entirely appropriate to use what is apparently my most overused cliche that there's a lot to unpack here. Yes, But there really is a lot to unpack here and really too much for us to do in one segment of this podcast. I, I think when you have been an advisor to every president from John F. Kennedy to Joe Biden, yes, apparently at some point early in the Biden days, Biden and Kissinger did talk and the people within the Biden administration did see him as someone who was worth getting in touch with every now and then to talk about what he saw going on in China and, and other uh, fronts of foreign policy. They didn't necessarily follow his advice, but they saw him as somebody worth listening to. Um, when you do that for that long, inevitably you're going to make decisions that people are – uh, if, you, if you've never disagreed with any decision Henry, Henry Kissinger ever made, then your name is probably Henry Kissinger. Uh, you know, anybody who's going to have disagreements there. And I, I, one of the things I think is the irony is that passing away at age 100, if he had passed away 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, I think the debates we're seeing right now and we're probably going to see for the next couple of days would be a lot more intense because the kinds of people who care the most about the Vietnam War or the bombing of Cambodia or uh, tapping people's phones to find a White House leak or any one of the many other decisions that Henry Kissinger was involved with, well, a lot of them aren't with us anymore. So this is, I don't want to say ancient history, but it is history. And most of the world has moved on. I, I think most young progressives hate Henry Kissinger because they've been told they should hate Henry Kissinger and don't actually know that much. They probably, oh, he started the Vietnam War or something like that. And as many people have pointed out, 
all the people who blame Henry Kissinger for Vietnam really very rarely have any disagree, you know, and much to say about John F. Kennedy or, or Linda Johnson. You could argue, ironically, they're angrier at uh, Kissinger for losing the war than uh, anybody for starting it. Look, I, I, I liked the way uh, George Will summarized it very pithily uh, in his column, quote, Kissinger helped manage the Cold War until the nation chose a president determined not to manage it, but to win it, obviously referring to Ronald Reagan. And I think that's a good way of summarizing the philosophy of Richard Nixon, uh, that he was not a not an optimist about the the contours of American power. And but he believed he was, you know, fighting a rear guard to slow the decline, to slow the retreat as slowly as possible. Um, and I just got to say that every, you know, even if you hated all of his views, you want to talk about a guy who knew exactly who he was and what he wanted to be and went out and became it and stayed in that role for, you could argue, half a century. I, I mean, just, you know, just being that influential uh, in all that. Um, just, you know, you'll be seeing quotes about Henry Kissinger from Henry Kissinger in columns probably for the rest of your life. Um I periodically uh, will quote uh, his assessment of South America being a dagger pointed straight at the heart of Antarctica. Infamously said, power is the ultimate aphrodisiac, which I think explains how he managed to have relationships with basically every hot celebrity woman in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. I like the assessment, you know, the various little quotes, there cannot be a crisis next week. My schedule is already full. 90% of the politicians give the other 10% a bad reputation. Each success only buys an admission ticket to a more difficult problem. Uh, there's a lot of hard-won wisdom and and you know things you understand from studying history in the way he looked and the way Kissinger looked at things. Um, he said to be absolutely certain about something, you must know everything or nothing about it. And I think that assesses why some people can be so certain about such things. So, you know, um, it was a full life. I think it was a life lived. To the to, Henry Kissinger turned out to be everything Henry Kissinger wanted to be, and whatever you think of him, I think that's almost a, a role model in that sense. That he knew what he wanted to be, and he went and he did it. We won the Cold War. Some would say not necessarily because of him. We also he opened up China to U.S. investment into U.S. relation a U.S. relationship, and we are dealing with the complications and consequences of that right now. So again, a complicated, multifaceted legacy. But he will meet, he will be missed, and uh, uh, may he rest in peace. Yeah, I, f- I failed to mention the one of the biggest parts of his legacy in the intro, and that's uh, him convincing Nixon to go to China and opening that relationship. And the goal at the time made sense strategically because you didn't want a massive nation like China teaming up with uh, our number one adversary at the time, the Soviet Union. Um, and so only Nixon can go to China and, and build that relationship. Unfortunately, towards the end, he still believed that constructive engagement with uh, the Chinese, even with this regime, was achievable. Um, Somebody that I respect a great deal suggested last night when we were talking about this, that after Tiananmen Square and after the fall of the Soviet Union, which were a couple years apart there, the U.S. should have tried to switch sides uh, because Russia could have used our help and could have become a, a much stronger ally, potentially. And it was obvious from Tiananmen Square that the Chinese were not going to end up like we hoped that they would end up, somebody embracing uh, the free market more than just as a way to to get rich and, and remaining uh, authoritarian. We'll never know uh, exactly what would have happened had we tried that. Would have been difficult, obviously. But uh, the the China question is probably going to be the lingering aspect of his legacy that we're dealing with for the longest time. Hey, y'all! This is Sarah from the Sarah Carter Show. Thanks for listening to Three Martini Lunch. We could all benefit from heart healthy energy, especially in this busy time of the year. One of the best ways to do that is to support your blood pressure and circulation with Super Beats Heart Chews. Paired with a healthy lifestyle, the antioxidants in Super Beats are clinically shown to be nearly two times more effective at promoting normal blood pressure than healthy lifestyle alone. And let me tell you something: when I'm traveling to New York, when I'm m- moving around the country, I need to feel optimum. I want to stay healthy and I want to feel energized. And I do that with Super Beats Heart Shoes. I absolutely love the flavor. I know you will too. And I know you're going to feel great. They're a convenient way to support healthy blood pressure. Super Beats Heart Shoes are plant-based and easy to add to your routine. No pills to swallow, no ingredients to mix or prepare. Double your potential with Super Beats Heart Shoes. Get a free 30-day supply of Super Beats Heart Shoes and a free full-size bag of turmeric chews valued at $25 
$100 by going to americalovesbeats.com. Get this exclusive offer only at americalovesbeats.com. That's americalovesbeats.com. All right, Jim, on to our bad martini now. And just after we taped on Tuesday, um, we found out that indeed the Israelis and uh, the Palestinians, really Hamas, had agreed to another couple of days of ceasefire. But now that ceasefire has clearly been broken. And the way that it's been broken is through deadly shootings uh, in Jerusalem. The Daily Mail reporting that Hamas has claimed responsibility for the Jerusalem shooting horror that left three dead, including a pregnant teacher, and Hamas also calling for an escalation of resistance. Eight people were also wounded in the shooting, carried out by two terrorist brothers. And so, Jim, as you point out again today in the morning, Jolt, ceasefire is supposed to mean you cease firing your weapons. But, uh, you know, Hamas has been on the letter of the law, violated and ceasefire in a number of ways already. Uh, you mentioned it uh, already earlier in the week. And now we've got this uh, blatant violation. And we'll be curious to see what the Israelis uh, do here. But everyone who's spent nearly two months now trying to convince us that Hamas is not something that it clearly is proven wrong again. Yeah. 2003, 2007, 2008, many times in 2014. Israel and Hamas would work out a ceasefire and then Hamas would, you know, the first time they saw a strategic opportunity, start shooting at Israelis again. What we saw yesterday was a shooting at a bus stop. Last numbers I saw were three dead and six injured and Hamas took credit for it. Well, if you take credit upon further attacks on civilians in Israel during a ceasefire, you have violated the ceasefire. Now, I would like to see a permanent ceasefire as well. I think the only way you get that permanent ceasefire is that Hamas is eliminated. When people say, we need, a, we need a ceasefire now, we need a permanent ceasefire. Well, what people really mean is we need a unilateral ceasefire. Because they know, everybody knows Hamas is just going to keep shooting. Everybody knows Hamas will honor a ceasefire for as long as they find it useful. If they need to retreat, if they need to reposition weapons, if they need to reposition guys. For Hamas, a ceasefire is just a brief pause in between attacks. And calling for a ceasefire without acknowledging that is basically saying you want a circumstance in which Hamas kills Israelis, but Israel, Israel is not allowed to shoot back and not allowed to attack Hamas. Um, now, I find that an outrageous situation. I have a sneaking suspicion that some people are just fine with that circumstance. But whatever you want to call that, don't call that working for peace. The people who are marching on campus and the people with their alleged moral uh, high ground, pretty quiet on this today. And I also just wonder, Jim, trying to tie it back to the other one, how many people who think Henry Kissinger was the world's worst monster are perfectly fine with what Hamas is doing? Hmm. Or, or can find some way to justify it, excuse it, or they'll simply, you know, avert their eyes from it because they find it, you know, inconvenient. All right. Well, let's talk about uh, something far better than Hamas and its apologists. And that is our great sponsor for the day. Four Patriots, makers of many fine products, including the best-selling survival food kits, uh, but also many other things. The Patriot Power Blender, uh, helping you grow things that are good for you. The Leafy Green Hydro Garden and Floral Seed Kits. Also the Aztec Chili with Mango Survival Food Kits and the Sun Kettle Solar Cooker. Speaking of solar power, though, don't forget about the Patriot Power Generator 2000X. Double the capacity and more peak power than ever before. So use that Patriot Power Generator to power your critical appliances, your fridge, your freezer, medical devices, and a whole lot more when the power goes out. Comes with a solar panel, meaning you don't have to go out and get gas. And more importantly, you don't have to pay for more gas. Fume-free, silent, and safe, 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Visit 4 slash martini to see this week's discounts and deals before they are gone and get free shipping on orders over $97. Save more and get peace of mind now by going to the number 4patriots.com slash martini. That's 4patriots.com slash martini. Even if you got a raise last year, you're still going backwards. Prices have come down, but they are not lower than they were last year. If you hear that violent crime is down 6%, it's still 25% higher than it was in 2019. Don't get hit by the spin zone. Check out the Watchdog on Wall Street podcast on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. <laughs> All right, Jim, on to our crazy martini now. And uh, even though Donald Trump is not on Twitter anymore, uh, we often see other people post his uh, comments from his Truth Social site. And one yesterday that had a lot of people scratching their heads, 
uh, reads like this. Spoke with Mark Fisher yesterday, a great guy. Very honored to have his and BLM's support. I have done more for black people than any other president. Lincoln, and then in parentheses, including 10-year funding for historically black colleges and universities where they had none, opportunity zones, criminal justice reform, and much more. Thank you to Mark. Um, I would say Lincoln has done more, uh, just out, out of clarity there. Uh, Jim, uh, at first, you know, uh, BLM endorsing Trump, really? And then I'm like, maybe it's the Bureau of Land Management, but uh, probably don't want their support either. But no, obviously, he says as he goes into what uh, he believes should lead black voters to support him, as uh, it makes it clear it's uh, Black Lives Matter. Uh, the same group that, of course, was uh, deeply involved in riots and billions of dollars of property damage and attacks on police officers, attacks on dozens of Secret Service agents outside the White House, in fact, in the wake of the George uh, Floyd riots. Uh, we know that some of the top BLM leaders were intense grifters buying multi-million dollar homes and pocketing a lot of the money and so forth. But, you know, if you look at the BLM charter, they've got some Marxist tendencies uh, as well. And so some people are wondering whether this Mark Fisher speaks for BLM because ultimately they're, they're a group on the left. But uh, the bigger question in my mind is why Donald Trump would want to make people think that he's, you know, in solidarity with Black Lives Matter. So what do you make of this uh, odd episode? Well, one of the things worth noting is that the leader in question, Mark Fisher, he has described himself as the co-founder of Black Lives Matter Rhode Island, uh, which seems like a fairly important distinction when you see him <laughs> described as a co-founder of Black Lives Matter. Um, and also people in Black Lives Matter Rhode Island say, ah, that's not really the case. He was a respected advocate for our group, but that's it. He was paid and then he got fired and got demoted. Uh, Mark Fisher has popped up on Fox News criticizing Democrats. So I think it's safe to say that um, you know, Mark Fisher is free to say whatever he wants and endorse whoever he wants. It is disputable about whether he really is representative of the mentality within black, the Black Lives Matter movement as a whole. And it appears, according to the Providence Journal, he no longer has any formal role in that organization. Um, so there was never any question of whether Black Lives Matter as an organization was going to endorse Donald Trump. But I, as I think you pointed out, like, you know, don't most people see Black Lives Matter, the formal organizations, as opposed to the social movement? Um, don't most people see it as a grift by now? Certainly don't most conservatives or Republican primary voters see it as a grift right now. Um, really, I think, you know, like the, Trump has a lot of flaws, but maybe one of the most, maybe one of the flaws that skews his worldview most severely is that if you say something nice about him, Trump will say nicely. Trump, Trump is very pleased. Trump, Trump is always welcomes that he's always very happy to see that. And he does not care about who said, like, he will instantly forget everything else that's ever, this person has ever done if they say nice things about him. And vice versa, you could be the very finest uh, rock ribbed, accomplished conservative leader of all time. But if you uh, criticize Trump, then you're worthless and you're the worst person ever, et cetera, et cetera. I, I remember uh, it was not that long ago complaining about the uh, uh, lack of support in Iowa. Trump did take credit for getting Chuck Grassley elected. Um, now, as, you know, as listeners probably know, Chuck Grassley was first elected, like, God, was this 40 or 50 years before Iowa became a state? <laughs> it's been a long time, right? A really long time. And Chuck Grassley is his, you know, if like in Iowa, the, the approval rating of corn is like 99% and, uh, the 1% is allergic and like Grassley is about 99%, right? Or 90, 90, 98%. But anyway, so like Trump, you know, everybody who likes him is the best. Everybody who hates him is the worst, or doesn't like him is the worst. And in this case of, you know, uh, somebody once affiliated with a state chapter of Black Lives Matter calls up and endorses him. Well, oh, you know, honored to have his support. He's done, you know, well, like, you know, I, I, does it do any, is anybody actually persuaded when, when he runs around boasting and bragging like this? I don't think, any, you know, by the way, Trump did actually see a little bit of an improvement in his numbers amongst African-American voters. I think this is a demonstration that, um, there are a decent number of African-Americans who look at the Democratic Party and ask, what have you done for me lately? I think we also underestimate the rate of entrepreneurship within the African-American community. You know, the standard issue uh, offerings of the Democratic Party just aren't, you know, as appealing to them as they once were. But we're talking about very small differences, you know, very small increases in the overall. Overall, you know, generally, African-Americans are a, you know, have a highly Democratic-leaning demographic. And, you know, this is what 
this is all you need to know about Trump is that if somebody from Black Lives Matter says I endorse you, all of a sudden Trump forgets everything else he's ever heard about Black Lives Matter and start, welcomes it, touts it and legitimizes. Oh, thank goodness for Black Lives Matter. And that's that's Trump in a nutshell. That's where we are, America. Happy Thursday. Yeah. Be curious to see if some of his supporters online try to rationalize this or just pretend it didn't nah, happen. They'll, they'll, ignore it. It. they'll ignore no. it. They'll ignore it. So we'll, we'll find out. Now, the best martini of the day, of course, Jim, is that you're back. Uh, folks who listened on Wednesday know that uh, you're under the weather. Uh, your voice sounds uh, strong today, but uh, continue to get better. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. How are you feeling? Greg, if my if my voice sounds strong, it means the microphone's not working. <laughs> Jim Garrity, National Review. I'm Greg Columbus, Radio America. Thanks for being with us today. Do subscribe to the podcast. If you don't already, please tell some friends about us as well. Thanks for your five-star ratings and your kind reviews. Please keep those coming. Get us on your home devices. All you have to say is play Three Martini Lunch podcast. Follow us both on X. He's at Jim Garrity. I'm at Dateline underscore DC. Have a great Thursday and join us again on Friday for the next Three Martini Lunch.